Hi everyone, welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, a series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we're going to learn how to play U-Boot. Now, the rulebook with some 50 pages may seem to be a little intimidating, but it's actually not that difficult to be honest. I would recommend you to watch the core rules first and then watch those sections for each particular order as you encounter those orders in the game. That's the best way how to learn the game on the fly as you play. So, let's get started. First of all, choose the roles. In a four-player game, each player will take one role. When playing with the smaller player counts, some players will take more than one role. Place the 3D model of a submarine in the middle of the table and line up these section cards with the sections of a model. Section number 7 is this part of the upper deck and section number 8 is this part of the upper deck. Each card displays a section number and all the actions that take place in that particular section. Then each player will prepare his play area using these player aids. The captain player takes his player board, the crew tile with the corresponding miniatures, three decks of morale cards, which you need to sort by color and then shuffle each of the decks separately, then the deck of captain's cards, two order tokens placed on the starting position of both the order track and the morale track, small bag with the crew tokens which are placed into the bag, activation tokens, two cigarette tokens and a captain's log for tracking the mission progress. The first officer will also take the panel, crew tile with the corresponding miniatures, deck of event cards which you need to shuffle before the play, medical supply tokens, medkit tokens which are only used when you play linked missions, wound, fatigue and killed in action tokens, activation tokens, two cigarette tokens and the wound cards sorted by type and each deck shuffled. In addition, the first officer will get the mobile device which runs the companion app, then the identification sheet of vessel types and the Enigma code sheet. The navigator will get his panel, crew tile with the corresponding miniatures, one strategic map, 360 protractor, ruler, set of tactical map markers and the attack disc. Then he takes the activation tokens, observation tokens and food tokens, which you need to shuffle and randomly place six of them on this pyramid. And finally take the two cigarette tokens. The chief engineer will take his panel, crew tile with the corresponding miniatures, chief engineer's cards which you need to distribute evenly into two separate decks, technical puzzle pieces and a lot of tokens. Activation tokens, technical condition tokens, environmental condition tokens, one flooded section token and then five supply tokens, which you can place anywhere into sections one to six, maximum one token per section. You also get two tokens of toolboxes with number one and number two. Number one corresponds to this toolbox, number two corresponds to this toolbox. One of these toolbox tokens is placed into section two and the other one into section four. Finally, chief engineer also receives two cigarette tokens. Now place the sailors into their starting positions as indicated by the rulebook. Take the miniatures from the player panels and place them into corresponding sections. Now choose the game mode and the difficulty levels. When you launch the application, click on play game, choose the game mode, which is either a single mission, then link missions, where you play several single missions connected together, or you can play all the missions in a campaign mode. When you choose a game mode and the mission, for each role, you can choose a different difficulty settings from easy through medium to hard. 
Many difficulty settings, adjust the game rules and you can find the description in this window. After you're done with choosing the difficulty levels for each role, click next, read the mission briefing and objectives and click start mission. Each player controls and may move only four sailors in their color. Players have two watches available. First one, and then on the other side of the crew tile, there's a second watch. Each sailor has two specialization icons, and these icons represent orders that these sailors can perform more effectively. When captain issues an order, like the change of the course, he needs to pay for that order by moving the order token one space on this order track. As the player aid indicates, the first officer has to have two sailors with this helm icon in a section 3 to carry out this order. Looking at the first officer's crew tile, there are two sailors with this specialization icon. So these two sailors have to be present in a section 3. Sailors who carry out the order need to be activated and they both receive this activation token. Then you can carry out the order in the application. Select the desired action, change the parameters, confirm and the application will ask whether the sailors are in position. Once they are, the order is executed. The application confirms the new course. When the order token on the order track is in the last position, the captain must pay for the order by moving the order token on the morale track. All sailors who carry out the order must have the activation space available. Each sailor has three activation spaces and if all the activation spaces are full, those sailors may not carry out any other order. Sailors who don't have the required icon, in our case this helm icon, can also carry out the order, but when they're activated, they don't get one, but they get two activation tokens. Again, they must have those activation spaces available. So even though these two sailors don't have this helm icon, they can still carry out the order and change the course. However, they still need to be present in a given location. In this case, it's the section number three. If a player has any sailors in this section 7 or section 8, they can discard one cigarette token and initiate a cigarette break. This is not an order, it's basically free to play. For each cigarette token discarded, up to four sailors in section 7 and section 8 can discard one activation token. The player who discarded the cigarette token decides which four sailors will discard the activation token. He may decide to discard activation tokens from his own sailors, but also from the sailors of other players. Smoking can be done only one time per watch, and if there are more than four sailors, players can collectively discard more than one cigarette token. Again, for each cigarette token discarded, up to four sailors can discard one activation token. However, each sailor can discard maximum one activation token. When you want to move your sailors and get them into required positions, the captain must issue a mobilization order. First, he needs to pay for that order but the sailors don't get the activation token. Now, players may move any number of sailors from any location to any new location. Sections 1 to 6 are adjacent to each other, as are section 7 and section 8, and you can get to the section 8 through section 3. If you are submerged, then obviously section 7 and section 8 are unavailable, and all your sailors must be in section 1 to 6. During mobilization, any one sailor can pick one supply token or one toolbox and move it to another section. So for example, if this sailor 
would move from section 1 to section 4, he can on his way pick this toolbox and place it to the section 3 for example. The sailors must take the shortest path possible, so the sailor from section 4 would not be able to move to section 5, pick up this supply token and then move to section 2 for example. Sections with this electric hazard token, toxic gas token and fire token are called hazardous sections. If a sailor gets into such section or if he would pass through or if he would be in and stayed in that section, you need to resolve the crew damage. Resolve each section separately. For each environmental condition token, the captain will draw as many crew tokens as there are sailors in that section. Sections 7 and 8, the entire upper deck, is treated as one section. So for this section, captain needs to draw one crew token. If the token doesn't match sailors who are in that section, nothing happens. However, if any tokens match the sailors in that section, that sailor becomes wounded. The first officer would draw the wound card from the deck, which corresponds to the environmental condition token. That wound card is then assigned to the wounded sailor. Then you can return all the crew tokens back into the bag. In case there are more environmental condition tokens in a section, you would need to resolve crew damage for each token separately. Remember that you need to resolve the crew damage not only for the sailors who are in the section, but also for the sailors who went through the section. When you assign health condition cards to sailors, place the indicated tokens into activation spaces. If the health condition card has this exclamation mark effect, this effect is valid until the card is removed. If the affected sailor wouldn't have enough activation spaces available, first discard the activation tokens. If you still don't have enough activation spaces available for these two tokens, then you can also discard these busy tokens. Then start placing the health condition tokens from left to right, so starting with the red cross and then the fatic token. When a sailor would have to get second wound token, which is the one with the red cross, he is killed in action. Remove the health condition tokens, place there the KIA token, you can remove the health cards and remove the killed sailor from the game. Decrease the morale by two spaces, but remember, although this sailor is killed in action, the sailor from the second watch is still alive. When the order token on this morale track reaches or crosses the space with this arrow, you need to draw and resolve the corresponding morale card. When the morale drops more significantly, you need to draw and resolve the morale card for each space with an arrow you cross or reach. Draw and resolve the corresponding cards one by one applying the effect of each card drawn. If the morale increases, do not resolve the morale cards. When the morale reaches the last space of this morale track, the crew is exhausted. First, draw the corresponding morale card and resolve it. And then, in case of any other environmental condition or a hull breach, all players lose the game. Every six hours, a watch change occurs. It is also announced by the application. First of all, the captain adjusts the order track to the indicated space. Now, the active watch is going to take a rest and becomes inactive, and the second watch becomes active. Each sailor either discards one activation token, and I mean each sailor from the watch that is going to rest, or if the sailor has this busy token, 
move that token to his corresponding counterpart and if that counterpart wouldn't have the matching symbol as in this case then those counterparts will have to get another activation token in case the counterpart sailor doesn't have enough activation spaces available you cannot move this busy token to that counterpart and you simply discard those busy tokens corresponding repair activity has to be stopped and the number of repairing sailors need to be adjusted if the sailor has any health condition tokens but there are sufficient medical supplies on the health condition card you can discard the health condition token instead of the activation token also remove the health condition card if the sailor has the health condition token and the busy token and there are sufficient medical supplies on the health condition card you can discard that health condition token and also move the busy token to the corresponding counterpart of course you discard the health card as well now when you flip the crew tile these specialization icons are different on the other side so you will probably need to do mobilization to get the correct sailors into position if you prefer a slightly easier version of the game do not flip the crew tile simply slide it up all the miniatures remain in their positions but thematically these sailors are going to take rest and the new watch is coming to replace them so when the watch changes always resolve the crew damage in the corresponding sections when the sailor is killed in action but his counterpart is still active you can place that miniature into any section you want and without resolving the crew damage when the watch changes again simply remove the corresponding miniature now in this section of the video we'll cover all the orders in the game we'll start with the new course first of all captain needs to move the order token by one space then the navigator is responsible to give you the course if this is your current position and this is where you want to get to then take the 360 protractor align the middle of the protractor with the place where you are at the moment and make sure this number zero is pointing towards top of the page it needs to point to the north then look at the line and you can read the new course over here in this case it's three to eight now the first officer has to click on course in the application and set the desired course using this dial after confirming the course the application will ask whether the first officer has two sailors with these symbols in section 3 the first officer will check his screw tile and find out that he needs these two sailors in a section 3 so if those two sailors are in position first officer can confirm in the application and the application confirms the new course finally make sure that the activated sailors will get the activation tokens at the start of the game the u-boat is usually surfaced and not moving when you want to change the speed first captain needs to move the order token by one space then he needs to decide whether the u-boat will go slow ahead half speed ahead or a full speed ahead or potentially full astern let's say we want to go full speed ahead then the first officer will click on speed in the application select the desired speed and confirm now the chief engineer has to have two sailors with these symbols in section 5 the chief engineer will check the sailors and their bases and give them one activation token when the crew is in position the first officer can confirm now section 5 contains diesel engines and those are used when the u-boat is surfaced when the u-boat is submerged then you cannot use the diesel engines you have to switch to electric engines so when you're submerged and you want to change the speed let's say we want to slow down to approach to the target the chief engineer has to have those two same sailors in section 6 
that's the electric motor room. So keep that in mind and also keep in mind that the electric motors use the electric batteries that will only last about 20 hours at max. When you click on instruments, you can check the health of the batteries. Batteries are recharging when you use the diesel engines. So overnight, when the visibility is very low, it's recommended to run on diesel engines surfaced. When you are submerged and you want to change the depth, again, first of all, move the order token by one space, click on the new depth in the application and set the new value. After confirming, first officer needs to have these two sailors and the chief engineer these two sailors in section three. So you need to activate both healthmen and you also need to operate those ballast tanks. So you need to activate also these sailors. In case all of them are in position, you can confirm in the app. When you want to resurface or when you are surfaced and you want to dive, you need to operate the ballast tanks, the helm, and you need to switch from one engine to another. When you resurface, you switch from electric engine to diesel engines. And when you dive, you switch from diesel to electric. That's why you need one sailor in each section. In the app, select depth. And when submerged, let's say we want to resurface. After confirming, you need these six sailors in the given positions. So when the crew is in position, you must activate all those sailors and confirm. When you are surfaced and you have some observers on the upper deck, so that's either in section seven or section eight, and you decide to dive, make sure you move those observers back into the U-boat. If you would leave them on the upper deck, they would all be killed in action. For each sailor killed in action, reduce the morale by two, but reduce the morale by maximum six points, even if more sailors are killed in action. When you have some sailors in the section eight, which is this part of the upper deck, or section seven, which is this part of the upper deck, you can start observing. First pay for that order, and then each sailor who starts observing will get this observation token. If you have sailors who have the observation icon, then they only get one observation token. When you activate sailors who don't have the observation icon, don't forget to give them one additional activation token. In the application, click on the observers and enter the number of activated sailors. As you can see, you can activate maximum six observers. The application will open up the first person view. It's a free action and if you have any observers, you can enter it anytime during the game. Observation takes place over a longer period of time. That's why these observation tokens are also busy tokens. So if you would change the watch, simply move the observation tokens to the counterpart. When the observing sailors have to leave the section seven or section eight, Flip the observation token to the other side, to the activation token. Then immediately adjust the number of observing sailors in the application. If there is at least one observer active and after mobilization, you decide to add more sailors to the observing activity, you don't need to issue another order. Simply activate the sailors who started observing and update the number of observers in the application. During the World War II, the navigation without GPS was very difficult. You can use this ruler to calculate the distance traveled. These numbers represent hours and they are equal to the full speed of the U-boat when surfaced. So when you start here, you would get to that destination in about 21 hours. When you are submerged, your speed is 50% slower than when you are surfaced. In addition, the batteries will not last longer than 18 to 20 hours, 
And that's why this scale is so short. Now, if you get lost, and you will probably get lost, you can use the sextant to check your current position. You must be surfaced, and you have to have at least one sailor in section 8. So, captain needs to issue an order, then activate the sailor, ideally the one with this sextant icon, and if that sailor is currently observing, the activation of sextant doesn't stop observation. Now go to the application, make sure the weather condition is clear, otherwise the sextant is useless, click on instruments, sextant, confirm crew in position, and the application will give you your current position. When you have a new message from the headquarters, you need to use the Enigma to read it. First, pay for the order, and then activate the sailor with this Enigma icon. He needs to be located in the section 2. Then click on Instruments, Enigma, and here you can see two messages. For one activation token, you can decode one message. Click on Decode, confirm to have the sailor with this icon in section 2, and then you need to enter the Enigma code. First, check the date when the message was received. So in this case, it's September 10th, 1940. Then take the Enigma code sheet, find the correct date, and you will find the corresponding Enigma code. Now, enter the code to the application, and you will get the message decoded. If you decide to read some other messages, it requires another activation. You don't need to issue another order, just assign the activation token. When you are submerged and you cannot visually see your contacts, you can use the hydrophone. First, captain needs to pay for the order, and then you can activate the sailor with the hydrophone icon. He needs to be located in section 2. Then click on the hydrophone in the application, confirm you have the sailor in position, and when the hydrophone detects a contact, you will see the information over here. You can use this knob to change the direction of the hydrophone, and when you detect a contact, the application will give you all the information. Before any attack, you need to visually identify your targets. When you are submerged, you can get to periscope depth, which is 6 to 10 meters. And when you get to that periscope depth, you can use the periscope. As always, captain needs to pay for the order, and then you can activate the sailor with the periscope icon. He needs to be located in section 3. Click on the periscope icon, confirm the sailor in section 3, and the application will enter the first-person view. With this button you can zoom in, and you can see your targets. After some maneuvering, we have the enemy vessel in a perfect position. When you have the attack disc, make sure that the bearing of the enemy is within this firing range of the torpedoes. When submerged, you can use the periscope order, and enter the first-person view. After zooming in, we now have a much better view of the enemy vessel. It's time to engage the torpedo data computer. Captain needs to pay for the order first. Then activate the sailor with the torpedo data computer icon. He needs to be located in section 3. In the application, click this big red button. Confirm you have the sailor in a section 3. When you have a contact selected, you can assign torpedoes 1, 2, 3 or 4 to that contact. Torpedo 5 is located at the back of the U-boat and it fires backward. So in this case we cannot use it. So let's say we assign torpedo number 1. Now we need to flood torpedoes, which are these two icons. So captain pays for the order. One of the sailors needs to be activated and they need to be present in the same section as those torpedoes, so either section 1 or section 6 when we fire torpedo number 5. Now, with this one activation, 
We can float as many torpedoes as we need, but this time only one of them is enough. Crew in position, yes. And now you can see the torpedo is flooded and now we can fire. Captain needs to pay for the order. Firing torpedoes requires the sailors with the same icon as flooding the torpedoes. So for each torpedo fired, we need to place one activation token. In case you want to fire multiple torpedoes with one order, for each other torpedo you add one activation token, even to multiple sailors. To fire a torpedo, simply press the red button. Now you can sit and watch how the torpedo approaches the target. Congratulations for a successful attack! After each successful attack, increase the morale by 3. Because we have one torpedo tube empty, we can go to armament and reload torpedo tube. To reload torpedo, we need three sailors with this reload icon. And we need them in the same section as the torpedo we are reloading. When you have the sailors in position, the captain issues an order. You need to activate all three participating sailors, choose a torpedo tube to reload and choose a steam torpedo or electric torpedo. Steam torpedo are fast and efficient, but they leave bubbles on the surface and they are easy to detect. Electric torpedo is very quiet and very difficult to detect, but sometimes it malfunction. So choose a torpedo type, confirm, crew in position, and it's done. When you face lone merchant vessel, instead of torpedo, you can use this 88 mm gun. You need three sailors with this icon, and you have to have them present in section 7. Captain needs to pay for the order, and all three sailors need to be activated. Go to the armament, select 88 mm gun, confirm you have three sailors in section 7, and now you can use these knobs to aim, and once you are ready, fire. Again, after sinking the ship, increase the morale by 3. In a similar way to 88 mm gun, you can use your sailors to operate this 20 mm gun. It's basically an anti-aircraft weapon. As always, captain pays for the order and you need to activate sailors with this icon. This activation doesn't stop the observation, so do not flip these tokens face down. Then click on armament, choose 20 mm gun, confirm you have those two sailors in section 8, and then you can fire as with the 88 mm gun, but this time you aim with your finger. When you need to fix some technical issues, or environmental condition problems, or even a hull breach, you need to use the repair order. We will cover the technical problems first, then the environmental issues, and then the hull breach. In any case, with one repair order, you can only fix one problem. That means you can only fix one token or one hull breach. When the application announces that you have a new maintenance task, mark each technical condition on the technical view with these maintenance tokens. There are three levels of severity, either the green one, yellow or red one, where the red one is usually a malfunction. If you click on repairs, for each task the application will show you how many sailors you need to get it fixed. Let's say we want to start with this maintenance task in section 6 first. We need three sailors there. Ideally we want sailors with this wrench icon. Now we can start with fixing the technical problem in section 6. Captain needs to pay for the repair order. We will activate these sailors and each will get this wrench token. Similar to observation token, these are busy tokens. That means that this task will take longer period of time to complete. Now go to the application, 
find the tasks and click on this icon. Enter the number of activated sailors and the repair work has been initiated. As the time goes by, you can see the progress of these maintenance tasks. When the repair task has been completed, the application will give you the notification. In this case, section 2 is done. We can remove this token from the technical view and the sailor who completed the task is no longer busy, so we can flip this token to the activation side. When the sailors are busy with some maintenance tasks, they can carry out other orders in the same section without stopping the repair. They would simply get another activation token, but these busy tokens remain with the wrench side up. However, they cannot get another busy token. Each sailor can have maximum one busy token. If sailors need to move out of the section, you need to flip the busy token to the activation side and the repair must stop. Go to the application, click on this working icon and the task is paused. Now click on the wrench icon and update the number of sailors busy with the task. As long as there is at least one sailor working on that task and you can reassign the sailors back to this task again, activate those sailors with another busy token, update the number of sailors in the application and the maintenance task continues. There is no need to issue another order for this. When instructed by the application, place the environmental condition token in a specified section and decrease the morale by one. This is the environmental condition situation and can be very dangerous. When you need to reduce the morale by one and your crew is already exhausted, you immediately lose the game. When you place the environmental condition token into a section, immediately resolve crew damage in that section. In case the section already contains some environmental condition tokens, when you add a new one, resolve the crew damage for both tokens. To fix the environmental condition situation, you need a sailor in a section and you need one of these yellow supply tokens. The Chief Officer's Player Aid provides an overview of supply tokens needed to fix particular environmental condition issues. So we need to get this wire supply token into section 4. We need the mobilization order and one of these sailors can bring the supply token to section 4. Because it's a mobilization order, at the end of the mobilization we have to resolve the crew damage. So during the mobilization we better get these sailors out of that section. After resolving the crew damage we can activate this sailor with a simple activation token. Then remove the environmental condition token, the supply token remains in place and then increase morale by two. Fixing all other environmental issues works in a similar way except for the toxic gas. When you're submerged resolve the crew damage and then you need to bring this rebreather into the same section. The rebreather doesn't fix this issue, but it prevents crew from the crew damage. To get rid of this toxic gas environmental condition, you need to resurface. Then you can open up the hatches and let the fresh air in. Remove the token and the problem is fixed. When you are surfaced and the toxic gas problem occurs, Simply resolve the crew damage once and then immediately remove the token. In case of a hull breach, you need to act super fast. There is a countdown running and you need to fix a specific section. Decrease the morale by one and in case your crew is already exhausted, you immediately lose the game. Then you immediately need to mobilize. You need five wrench icons in the same section as the hull breach and ideally you want to use the chief officer's card to help those sailors. Then captain needs to issue the repair order. You activate all the sailors participating in fixing this problem and then the chief engineer needs to start solving this puzzle. The puzzle is made of eight pieces and each piece is made of two sub pieces. 
there are six pieces that correspond to the U-boat sections and then there is a bow section and a stern section. The chief engineer doesn't have to complete the entire puzzle, only three sections. The sections that was breached and the section to the left and to the right. In case the hull breach would occur in section 1, he needs to put together pieces A, B and C. When chief engineer completes the puzzle, you can flip it to the other side to check if it's correct. If it's correct, hit the seal button and continue the game. If it's wrong, mobilize your sailors and get them out of that section before the time runs out. If you fail to complete the puzzle before the time runs out, all the sailors in that section are killed in action and the section is flooded and put this flood token on that section. Any resources in that section are lost and for the rest of the game this section is inaccessible. You cannot move into that section, you cannot move through that section, however other sections can be used normally. If one of the sections from 2 to 5 are flooded, like in this case section number 4, the U-boat is actually split into two parts. You can still get your sailors from one part to another, but you have to be surfaced and when mobilized your sailors need to be activated. If you have a sailor or a sailors with the health condition cards, you can treat these sailors with the first aid order. To do that, you need the medical supplies and you need a sailor with this icon. That sailor needs to be in the same section as the sailors receiving treatment. Then captain needs to issue and pay for the first aid order. And then you activate the sailor delivering the first aid. However, as with any other order, even the sailors without that icon can be activated, but they would receive two activation tokens instead of one. So, for one activation, you can treat one sailor. In order to treat the sailor, all these blue medical supply tokens are needed. The medical supply tokens are provided by first officer and placed on the health condition card. In order to treat the second sailor, the first aid sailor has to be activated again. However, captain does not need to issue another order. Take the required medical supply tokens and place them on the health condition card. Then, during the watch change, you can discard one health condition token from each treated sailor and you discard both the health condition cards and those medical supply tokens. Medical supply tokens are limited and when you use them and discard them, you will not be able to use them anymore. In linked missions, you have these medkits available. At any time during the game, you can discard the medkit token and return all discarded medical supply tokens back into your supply. At least once a day, you need to prepare food for your crew. There are seven types of ingredients and you make combinations of those ingredients. When you want to prepare the meal, captain needs to pay for the order and then you need one sailor with this icon in section 4. For one order only one sailor can be activated and then you can cook some meal. You have to choose up to three tokens but those tokens have to be connected. So for example I can do the tuna sandwich. I can take these two tokens and place them on these plates. Then randomly replenish the empty spaces. In case there is no combination available, for one additional activation token, you can either switch positions of any two tokens or you can discard a token and draw randomly new one. If there is a lemon available, you always have to take it, even if it's not connected. So if I decide to make this tuna sandwiches, I have to take this lemon as well, even though these spaces are not connected. When the application asks about the meal today, you report the meal and apply the effect on the morale. Depending on the number of tokens, apply the corresponding effect. However, the lemon never counts towards the number of ingredients used, 
So even if I make the sandwich with tuna and I need to use the lemon, it still counts as a meal made of two ingredients. When you need to replenish the food pyramid and there are not enough tokens in the supply, the food spoilage occurs. Immediately discard all the provision tokens of one type and you start with the meat. So discard all the meat tokens. Then flip all these provision tokens face down and refill the empty pyramid spaces. When the spoot foliage occurs for the second time and any other subsequent time, you can find the order in which you discard the food tokens in a rulebook. When the captain player wants to increase the team's morale, he can use one of the captain's cards. First, he needs to pay for the order. Then he needs to activate the sailor with this icon. And now he can play one of those cards. Read the card aloud, apply the effects of the card and then put it back into the box. So that's it. That's how you play the U-Boot game or maybe a simulation rather than a game. If you would have any questions or comments, I'll be very happy to answer your questions. And I have two recommendations myself at the end of this video. First, really, really, really read this tactical guide. If you don't know anything about submarine operations in World War II, this will teach you how to play the game well, how to perform those operations successfully, and how to score the most points, and how to be happy with your results. Second, if there is a certain rule in a game you don't really like, if there are some set of operations you don't like, make your house rules. Have fun. This game has a lot of rules. Some of them may be a little frustrating. If you don't like them, you can change the difficulty settings and you can even house rules uh, anything you want in this game. So have fun. We really do have fun with this game. Thanks for watching. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.